Hey there, Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here to share a very quick sew along with you all. We're going to sew up a style arc pattern. So if you are interested in seeing the sew along and seeing how this dress turns out, stay tuned. Okay, so today I am here with a fun sew along. I think this is going to be a great spring summer dress. And you can wear this all season because honestly with this sleeve style you could put a blazer or a cardigan on top of this dress but this dress is called the montana midi dress and it is by the company style arc style arc is out of i believe australia um, but you can find their patterns online they have some u.s distributors um, they sell directly on etsy um, as PDF patterns. I don't think they ship the printed patterns. But like I said, you can uh, find them, the printed patterns uh, online. I will link to, um, I will leave a link to where I get my patterns from on Amazon. I will leave the link uh, in the description box if anyone wants to use that, okay? So the Montana Midi dress is designed to use both woven as well as knit fabrics. So the fabric suggestions down at the bottom here indicate washed linen, rayon, crepe, or even a knit fabric. I'm going to use this um, Cafe Facet cotton. It's, well, it's actually a Brandon Mabley print for the Cafe Facet Collective. Um, I think it's lovely and I think this is going to turn out uh, to be a good like summer weight uh, fabric for this dress. Let's go over the pattern pieces included. The style art patterns come on one large sheet. So I've cut out all the pattern pieces and then I've cut out the, um, you know, the uh, pattern cover and then all the different cutting directions. And so I just cut these down. I'm going to put a staple here in the corner and that way I can store this with these pattern pieces when I'm done. Let's have a look at the pattern pieces that uh, come with this pattern. You have your top bodice front. You're gonna cut two of these of your main fabric on the fold. You have the top bodice back, same thing. You're gonna cut two on the fold and this is because it's designed to be lined. I do think there is an option to not line it because it comes with um, this piece here, which is for cutting um, a binding for both the neck hole and the armholes. I'm going to do the lining option so I will not be using this uh, binding piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side, but I will be using all the other pattern pieces. So we have our bodice pieces. We have our two facing pieces, one for the bodice front, one for the bodice back. You'll be cutting uh, this of the fabric as well as an interfacing. So I'm gonna be using all the other pattern pieces, however. So we went over the bodice pieces. These pieces here are for cutting uh, interfacing or stabilizer for the bodice uh, front and back neckline. I will do that. This piece right here is for pockets. I love a dress with pockets. You need to cut two pairs or four um, of these pattern pieces for the pockets. And then your and final then piece is this long piece here, which is the skirt portion. It has a line here for you to lengthen and shorten it. So if you're a petite, you're gonna wanna fold your fabric up after you decide you know, what length you want your um, dress to be. So you can make that modification there. If you are taller and you need it longer, you're actually going to cut your pattern piece on this line and open it up to add in the extra inches that you need. And the reason here is because the hemline is slightly curved and it incorporates a fold up hem kind of facing style. And so you can't just add on to the length at the bottom. And so you wanna go ahead and figure out if you need to do an adjustment. I'm not gonna lengthen mine. I'm about five foot seven and a half, almost five foot eight. And that is usually the standard uh, length that they use for patterns. Um, and probably somewhere in here, it's going to tell you the finished garment length. Um, but I'm just gonna make this first one. And you know, I feel like this is just going to be a great classic summer dress for me to make a couple more times. 
um, with some different fabrics. Like I would enjoy making this out of a knit as well. So this will also be just kind of a wearable muslin for me. And yes, it has all the different measurements that you need to consider here. So when you're trying to figure out the size that you need, you can look here at the different uh, measurements that they are giving for you to make your decision there. And then it's in centimeters here for the finished garment length as well as in inches. And so it's going to tell you, you know, the finished bust width, uh, the shoulder breadth, uh, the skirt length, etc. Okay. So you have a look at that guide and you'll figure out what you need to cut. And then, and then I'll show you quickly here. Stylehawk doesn't give really, really detailed instructions. Um, like some, you know, if you work with the big four pattern companies, um, you know, you're used to pages and pages. They really kind of condense them, but they do have some visuals for you to follow. And I just did a quick scan. You know, this is a pretty easy, I've sewn things like this a lot before. So, um, but do have a look and I'm just going to kind of show you the steps as I sew, um, as kind of a, not a fully detailed sew along full step by step, because I will be surging my edges and things like that. Um, but I'll show you, um, these steps here that I outlined in case anyone wants to see what that really looks like. Okay. But it gives you your layout for your fabric based on your fabric, uh, width as well. Uh, so yeah. Make sure you read these over, especially if you're relatively new to sewing garments. It's always good to read through your directions first uh, and make sure you're clear on all the steps um, as you go. OK, let me just show you some of the other uh, notions and things that we're going to need to sew this together. Um, and then I'm going to get this pinned and cut um, after that. So, OK, let's look at the other things we'll use. OK, so you don't need a ton of things actually to make this dress. Um, you're going to need your scissors and your pins. Obviously, we'll be pinning the uh, pattern pieces to the fabric and cutting them out again according to the directions and the layout provided. Um, you know, you can pick a thread. There's so many colors in this fabric. I could pick any thread. I'm going to go ahead with this pale gray because it's just going to blend in seamlessly with the fabric. And then, as I mentioned, we have those two pieces that will be uh, interfaced for the neckline. I'm going to use a dark interfacing since this fabric background is a little bit darker. Like I said, I will be serging my edges. If you don't have a serger, uh, the bodice is lined. And so you could just do French seams for your side seams with your pocket or do some kind of binding to cover those seams. And the same thing for the seam that you will create when you attach the bodice to the skirt. Okay. So you there are ways to cover this and make this very neat on the inside as well. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this pinned and cut out and then we will start sewing. All right. So I have everything cut out. I cut two pieces of the bodice back on the fold, two pieces of the bodice front on the fold. I have four pocket pieces and then I have this two skirt pieces cut out. Um, again, I'm going to just be loading these universal needles into my machine. I showed you the thread. Um, so I'm going to get the machine set up. I'm going to get the pattern pieces removed and then we're going to start to, um, you know, assemble the dress. So let's start with assembling the bodice of this dress. So I am doing the lined version. So that's why I have two each of the bodice front and bodice back cut out. We do have the option of doing this unlined and using the facing pieces um, as well. So what I have to do is I'm going to separate these. I need one bodice front attached to one bodice back. And the sewing for these is going to be the same in the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and spread open um, the bodice front. Okay. And then what we're going to do is to lay on top of it the bodice, the back piece. And we're going to be lining up the side seam and getting that pinned in place. Okay. So we're going to pin and stitch this side seam. 
and repeat that on the other side. And then we're gonna do the same thing with these two pieces, okay? So let's get this pinned and sewn. Now, before we head to the sewing machine, I mentioned before, you need to read your directions, right? But I want you to make special note again, style arc patterns, at least this one, and most of the ones that I've sewn, um, they use a 3 8 inch seam. So they do not use the 5 8 inch seam, which is typical of your big four, McCall, Simplicity, et cetera, patterns. So you need to make note of that. You're using a one centimeter or three eighth inch seam for all the uh, body construction. And then when you get to things like uh, necklines, you only have a one quarter inch seam. So you need to make that note. And if you're someone who likes to sew with larger seams, you need to add that extra seam allowance on before you cut out your fabric, okay? So I just wanted to jump in and make that note because if you sew this up with the 5 8 inch seam allowance, you run the risk that your garment is going to be too small, okay? You're, base, you're essentially sizing down, okay? So just wanted to make that quick note. Okay, so my bodice uh, side seams are sewn. And now what we need to do is insert one of the bodices inside of the other bodice section with right size facing. So here's the second one. Side seams are sewn on the second one. I'm gonna turn this one right side out and I'm gonna insert this into the other. Now, because I'm using the same fabric to uh, line this bodice, you know, it doesn't matter, but you could also use a solid or a contrasting fabric to um, as your lining. So what I'm going to do, I have them inserted right size facing. I'm going to alternate the direction because this is curved. I'm not going to press the seam open. I'm just going to um, have the seams going in opposite directions to reduce the bulk there. And then what I'm going to do is just pin here and then pin on the other side. And then I'm going to come up. You want to start sewing and stop sewing on the other side about two inches from the shoulder. So I'm just gonna use my handy dandy placemat. Each square is one inch. So I'm going to put a pin here and then the rest of that is going to stay open. And I'll put another pin here in this middle section. And I'll put another pin here in this midway point. Do the same thing on this side. You want to leave two inches open. You can also do this with a little notch or with a chalk pencil, marking that, um, you know, when you cut it out or, you know, right before you pin it. So you have that indication or just get a ruler. Got to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're also going to do the same thing on the neckline. So we, again, two inches down from the shoulder is where we need to start sewing. All right, so I'm going to put my first pin here. And remember, when we do this neckline seam, we're only going to be sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. However, when we do the uh, remaining portion of the sewing, that's all going to be three eighths of an inch. So just remember that because that is a little bit different than, um, like I said, typically the big four, McCall, Simplicity, etc. Okay. So I'm just going to pin this down well. I'm going to do the back neck and the other side, and I'm going to stitch that down and we'll be back. Okay, so the bodice is sewn together uh, through the armhole and the sides. And you can see here 
the shoulder area is left open. And again, we have these two inches left open here. Cut off these stray threads now. And then I'm gonna go in here and just snip close to, but not through the seam on these armhole curved seams, okay? And that's so that when we turn that right side out, it has the ability to kind of open up so that that seam will lie nice and flat. And again, you just wanna be careful. I usually use my little embroidery scissors for these because they're sharp and the tip of the, you know, the length of the blade is short so I don't accidentally overcut. So just use, you know, whichever scissors are comfortable for you. So I'm gonna do that on the other armhole and I'm gonna get all my stray threads cut off and then I'll be back to show you the next step for the bodice. So I just wanna show you all, I got that neckline snipped and then both armholes. Okay, so now this next step is to basically turn this bodice so that the right sides are facing out. Okay, so you want to have the front of your bodice out and then your lining will be inside of it with the wrong sides facing each other, okay? So it's gonna look a little crazy, but basically you're just going in and kind of sticking your hands, pulling those shoulder seams up, okay? Same thing over here. And then this is the stage, after I get this turned out, I'm gonna iron this really good first before I go on to the next step. Um, you don't have to, I just find it easier uh, for me to do without getting, you know, seams caught and stuff. I just wanna, I like to get everything pressed really good at this stage. So I'm going to press that. Um, that's just my thing. But the key is to basically get it turned right side out so that things are kind of lined up. And now you have to do your shoulder seams. So I'm just gonna show you the pinning process you want to do the um, back pieces, the lining pieces together. All right, so we're gonna sew that. We're gonna pin. So I'm gonna sew that one. But then for this one, it gets a little tricky because you need to have it like this. And you can turn that back right side out. I don't bother. If, it, if it's easier for you to turn that back to do that, This is how I do it. And then just to show you why this is pinned, why you do it that way. So you would, so I'm gonna sew this seam, I'm gonna sew that shoulder seam. And then when I turn everything back in, right, those seams will be sewn. And then we'll go in and attach that, but that's how that kind of works. All right, so I got that portion done. Now we're gonna move on. Um, and what we have to do, okay, let me cut this, let me cut these threads first. Cut your threads, y'all. I should be cutting them over at the cutting table. But. So now, right, we have our shoulder seams done, but we still have this these openings. Same thing on the other side, okay? And I really should have pressed this for you guys. So if I, we'll do this all at the end. Um, 
So now what we have to do though, is to go back to the inside, find that opening, okay? And so I do need to iron this first because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here, per the directions. I'm going to press the shoulder seams open first. Okay, I'm gonna press that open on both sides, okay? And then what I have to do is continue this armhole stitching at that opening, okay? So, so just put the pins in for demonstration to show you what you're gonna do, okay? So we're pinning that in place. So we're pinning that in place and then we're just gonna, you know, go back a little bit, do your back stitch and continue that armhole stitching here and then come over back stitch. And then you gotta do the same thing on the other side, okay? I'm gonna get my iron set up, get this all pressed so I can do this properly. And then we'll sew that seam and I'll show you the completed bodice. Okay, friends, so I'm gonna get some ironing down here, but I just wanna show you, um, I got those shoulder seams ironed. I got those shoulder seams stitched. So I'm just gonna press those open first before I turn that back right sides out. Okay, that's the neck, and here, up in here, is another shoulder seam. So I'm gonna press that open. So now I'm gonna go ahead and invert this right sides out and I'm gonna give this all a really good press. Make sure all the seams are nice and flat. And I'm gonna get all my straight threads cut off and then I'm going to do the top stitching, okay? So let me get this ironed. We will move on with the rest of the dress. And so we are now here. We're going to complete steps seven through eight, which is um, adding the pockets to the skirt and sewing the skirt section together. Okay. And remember, you should have made your indication on your skirt fabric. I did my notches to indicate where I'm going to be attaching the pocket. We do that on all um, four of the skirt side seams. So it's two pieces, right, with two side seams each. The front and the back are symmetrical. The pockets are absolutely identical. So we just take one and we are looking for our first notch, which is here, and we're matching that up with our notch here on the pocket. And we're just pinning those together right sides facing. And we're just pinning those together right sides facing. And then the seams should match up as they do. And then these seams match up here. I mean, these notches rather. And this is where we're gonna sew the um, the pocket piece to the skirt. We're just gonna sew between these two um, notches. We're gonna leave above it open and below it because this is actually going to be the seam allowance for sewing the um, pockets to each other to create the, the actual pocket. So for now, we're just going to sew as indicated here in the directions, we're just gonna sew between those two notches. We're not gonna sew above the notch nor below the notch, okay? So I'm gonna get the other three pocket pieces pinned on and get that stitched down. Alrighty, all right, so we have our pockets uh, stitched on to the skirt portion here. We have these openings. And so, and so now what we need to do is just come in here and we're gonna do a little snip here 
And I did the back stitching. Don't forget to do your back stitching so that the seam doesn't come undone. But we got the back stitching done. And now what we're going to do, and so we've clipped that. And now what we, uh, it wants us to do a little bit of under stitching here. And so we need to, um, I'm going to use my iron to get that nice and flat. Snip this so that we could fold that back, right? I'm going to press this seam really good. And then I'm going to come in and just under stitch, which is basically stitching this seam. I'm going to come in and under stitch, which is basically I'm from the top side here. I'm going to be stitching this portion of the seam to this pocket here. And that's just basically to make sure that this seam stays going in towards the pocket and doesn't flip out and you know is facing out at the uh, skirt front or skirt back piece. It's basically to keep that seam going in towards the pocket, okay? Okay, friends, so I have attached my pockets and I've done the under stitching as I said I would do. I'm gonna clip those seams off, but you can see here, I did not stitch down beneath the notch, right? So now what I'm going to do, and again, remember, the skirt front is absolutely identical to the skirt back. Sometimes when you do these, the back is wider than the front, um, but in this particular pattern, they are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter. You decide what's the front and what's the back. Um, but right now you just need to lay these on top of one another. And then what we're going to do is we need to line up the side seams and this pocket area. You can see here, this is stitched back here and this is not, okay? So this is where we're gonna sew. Um, I need to snip that a little bit more. I need to snip that a little bit more. I'm gonna get those strings off. Okay, but anyway, we gotta get this pinned. And for the pinning, we are going to be starting all the way up at the top. Okay. And then we're gonna come down here. This is not snipped quite enough, Sherry. There we go. So we're gonna come down here, get that pinned in place. Okay. And then now what we're gonna do here is we need to pin the pocket the two pocket pieces to one another. Let me close up the scissors. So, so just continue, pin all around. I'll come back and do that part. I just wanna show you here. Just wanna show you here, with the pocket, right? So we're gonna come back here. This is lined up. Okay, so we get the side seam pinned again. So this portion is gonna be um, going here. And then this portion here is where we're gonna come in and sew the rest of the pocket down first. And then we're gonna come in here, fold it back, and then sew straight down here, okay? So I'm gonna get this pinned and stitched. And just to show you, this is steps seven through eight, okay, on um, the pattern piece, all right? Okay, friends, so I got the skirt portion all stitched up. Again, I'm gonna go in here, get all these extra threads. I did go ahead and serge the seams uh, after I sewed them. Um, if you don't have a serger, you can finish this with pinking shears um, or with some seam binding to close up your seams. Um, you could do a very thin lining, like basically remake the skirt without the pockets and just create a lining um, to have it a little bit more finished in the inside. That's up to you. 
Um, and I went on and searched the hemline also. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the side seam. Uh, so this will be my back. I'm gonna press them towards the section that I'm gonna call my back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fold up and press that seam all around as well. I'm gonna hem it and then we'll go on to the final step, which is attaching the bodice to the skirt portion. Okay, so I got the bodice all situated, got all my uh, extra threads cut, ironed nicely. And then as you can see, I did my top stitching. Um, now the pattern, as I mentioned in the beginning, had pattern pieces for neck and armhole stabilizer. I'm using a 100% cotton fabric. Um, that fabric doesn't really need to be stabilized and I'm lining it and I like a top stitch. So this is how I did mine. If I were doing this with like a rayon or something, um, I would have used the stabilizer, but for cotton, you know, for me, um, I decided to skip that step. I don't like adding in those kind of um, synthetic uh, fiber uh, interfacings and things like that with cotton, unless I really need to. Okay, so that's the bodice. And then we have our skirt portion ready as well. I got that all ironed, uh, hemmed. And now um, what I need to do, we need to put some gathers along the upper waistband portion so we can draw this in so that it fits to the bodice circumference. And then we're gonna attach those. I didn't completely press out my center point lines on the bodice because and nor that I did on the skirt because that's what I'm going to use to match up the center seams. Um, and then after I'm done, I'll give everything a really good press and press those seams out, okay? So if we look at the pattern directions, um, just so you guys can follow along, we're now about to do steps nine through 11, okay? And so we need to do two rows of a loose stitching. I will link in the description box and maybe put in the i card right now uh, a video where I show you how to do how I do my gather stitches. Um, in case you're totally new to that, but we're gonna put gathering stitches along this upper portion of the skirt, and then we're gonna pull that in to gather and attach it to the skirt. Here is saying to stay stitch um, this bottom edge. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do like a basting stitch to keep those two seams together since I'm gonna serge um, that seam anyway. Um, if I weren't gonna serge it, honestly, I would just attach the outer bodice to this and then I would leave that lining portion unattached and then I would press that under and base that down to cover the seam. Um, but again, I'm just gonna serge this whole thing. Um, and let me know, I can do another um, kind of dress like this. I have another one in the queue. Maybe I'll show you um, how to do that kind of finishing without the serging around the edge. But anyway, let's go forward. I'm gonna put the gathering stitches in and then I'll come back and show you how to draw those stitches in and attach it to the bodice, okay? So I just went on and did one row of stitching. Um, if you're new to doing the gathering, and if this were a thicker fabric, I would have done the two, but I'm just gonna do one. So don't follow me, <laughs> uh, follow the directions um, and do the two if that's more comfortable for, for you. And I do my, um, I like to do my gather stitching in sections. So I went from one center point in the front to the center point in the back. And then I stopped and I started again, going from that center point in the back, back around to the center point in the front. So I have it in two sections in case a thread snaps. I don't have to redo the whole section. I can just do the one side, okay? And uh, and then that also, like, it's also gathered already kind of in half, um, even though I have these marking lines and I have the seam lines. It just helps me to evenly distribute the gathering when I have it that way. So I have my skirt, say I press the seam to the back, so I have, the back down and this is my front. So since the bodice does have a back 
and front that's different. You want to make sure you make note of that. So this is my bodice front. I'm going to turn it upside down and insert that into the skirt. And then I'm going to match up the side seams and the middle uh, pressed line. And, and then I'm going to distribute the gathers, okay? So this is side seam one. Oops. That's so that's side seam one. This is the center of the front bodice here. This is the center of the skirt. So I will attach the pin there. And then I will go to the next side seam. And this is not a, a really like um, super gathered skirt. It's just slightly gathered. So I didn't pull the strings too, too much and I'll pull more or loosen up um, as necessary. So now we're at the center back. So again, I'm looking for that pressed seam, which is here, and I'm matching up that pressed seam there. That's my center back. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna distribute this gathering between this section here and as you can see it's just it's not um you know super gathered it's just kind of a lightly gathered attachment we're doing here so i'm just going to kind of spread it out and then stick some pins in that's all So I'm going to repeat this for the other four sections. Okay, so I got that all distributed and pinned around the circumference. Oop, let me put a, another pin in this section. Um, but I'm going to go and stitch that seam down and serge it. We are almost done. Okay, friends, so I got that all sewn up and serged. Okay, and uh, yeah. Let's get this turned right side out. I'm gonna show you the final step I'm going to do. It's not a part of the directions, I don't think, but let me see. Yeah, it doesn't have you do this part, but it's something that I like to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press this waistband seam, um, this waist seam up towards the bodice. So if we're looking from the wrong side, I'm going to press this up and I'm going to do a top stitch um, all around the waistline. And then, so yeah, we'll do that and we'll get this onto the mannequin so you can see what this looks like. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden, I'll follow only golden, 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 golden things. Mountain Laurel High Five. Miles in spring, rainbow trout and hummingbird wing. Golden, I'll follow the golden, golden, golden things. Gold hair, gold ring.
river by my son feet step over splinters of the moon